My father had taught me, looking at a bird, he says, do you know what that bird is? It's a brown-throated thrush. But in Portuguese, it's a honda da pedo. In Italian, a chute da piquita. He says in Chinese, it's a chung mong to. In Japanese, a patata to kodacha, etc. He says, now they know all the languages you want to know what the name of that bird is. And when you're finished with all that, he says, you'll know absolutely nothing whatever about the bird. You only know about humans in different places and what they call the bird. Now, he says, let's look at the bird and what it's doing. And he knew the difference between knowing the name of something and knowing something. Unlike Darwin, he had no inherited money. He hadn't gone to Cambridge or Oxford. He was just a bright, curious kid from a poor family. He'd net butterflies, he'd grab beetles, he'd shoot birds during the day, and then he'd spend the evening processing his specimens and his ideas. When the rains made collecting impossible, he waited. When his feet became too infected to walk, he waited. And sometimes he had a cook or a boat crew, but mostly he was alone, very alone. On July 1st, 1858, Darwin's theory and Wallace's independent version of the same theory were presented at a small meeting of the Linnaean Scientific Society in London. And where was Wallace? He was off of the peninsula of Western New Guinea, waiting out the wet season and collecting beetles. So the first thing you have to do as an artist, the first thing you do, is you notice that the world is beautiful and there's something worth explaining. And then you find a language that allows you to, if not explain it, then begin to make sense of it or express your feelings about it. I think science is the same, exactly the same. I think it comes from the same place. And then you ask the question, well, what, how does it work? I, I, I want to uh, explore this beauty in as much detail as I can. And so in that sense, I think it's, you can see the LHC as an, art, an artistic expression. People say to me, are you looking for the ultimate laws of physics? No, I'm not. I'm just looking to find out more about the world. And if it turns out there is a simple ultimate law that explains everything, so be it. That would be very nice to discover. If it turns out it's like an onion with millions of layers and we're just sick and tired of looking at the layers, then that's the way it is. But whatever way it comes out, nature is there and she's going to come out the way she is. And therefore, when we go to investigate it, we shouldn't pre-decide what it is we're trying to do except to find out more about it. The problem is, why do you find out more about it? If you thought that you were trying to find out more about it because you're going to get an answer to some deep philosophical question, you may be wrong. It may be that you can't get an answer to that particular question by finding out more about the character of nature. My interest in science is to simply find out about the world. The LHC is the biggest scientific experiment ever attempted. It's 27 kilometers in circumference, and it sits in a cavern 100 meters below the ground. We take protons and we accelerate them to 99.999999% the speed of light, and then we smash them into each other inside four detectors, which are essentially digital cameras, and we just take a picture of those little collisions. We can make 600 million little mini big bangs every second. Its job is to recreate the conditions that were present less than a billionth of a second after the universe began with a really simple aim, which is to understand what are the fundamental building blocks of the universe, the smallest building blocks of reality. And I suppose, really, why the universe is built the way it is. If you give me the right man in any field, I can talk to him, I know what the condition is, that he did whatever he did as far as he can go, that he studied every aspect of it as far as he has stretched himself to the end. He's not a dilettante in any way, but so he talked as far as he can go, and he, therefore he's up against mysteries all the way around the edge. 